And I thought to myself that, oh crap, there goes my whole theory of cheap hosting, outperforming, expensive hosting. But then something interesting happened. There is just an awful amount of hosting companies out there. What do you even go for? Now, all of these companies promise you the best of the best. And while the purpose of this video isn't necessarily to show you the best WordPress hosting, even though it actually kind of is, what I am gonna show you is how my $5 cloud hosting server outperforms my $90 per month VPS hosting. Yes. Now, I'm not gonna be comparing a bunch of different hosting companies. That's been done to death. And I just have to say something before we actually get started. As much as there's a shit ton of hosting options available, what's worse is the incredible amount of people that recommend hosting based off of affiliate commissions. Anyway, so straight off the bat, let me make a few things clear. Forget just for a moment about all the different hosting options recommended by all the different people on the internet, on blogs and articles and let me show you exactly what cheap ass hosting really is capable of doing and no it's not shared hosting so what I did was I set up two different sites one site on my five dollar up cloud hosting thanks plane and another one was on my ninety dollar fast comet VPS server. So both of the sites run exactly the same free theme by Astra. Both of the sites run the free version of Elementor. Both of the sites have exactly the same amount of plugins. There's no CDN on either one of them and there's no caching on either one of them. The $5 site is hosted in London while the $90 VPS host is in the United States. Now you'd think that the more expensive hosting option would generally be the better option but i say on to you no right so let me show you the specs of my five dollar hosting option and then i'll show you the tests before moving on to the more expensive vps option now as you can see i'm using a site called upcloud as my host for the five dollar option and let me just tell you that these guys really know what they're doing and this little server only has one core cpu one gig of ram 25 gigs of space and like i mentioned is hosted in london pretty tiny right yeah i thought so as well and for the longest time i was under the impression that the more you pay, the bigger the specs of the server, the better the experience is going to be. Now remember that we're up against a 4-core, 8-gig, $90 per month VPS monster here. Oh, and obviously to keep things fair, each test was run from the location where the actual server is hosted. All the tests for the $5 option were run from the UK and all the tests for the bigger $90 VPS host was run from the United States. I mean, fair is fair. So let's have a look at some of the results, shall we? So Google page speed scores mobile at 52 and desktop at 89, which is really, really good, all things considered. GT Metrics scores an A with 97% and a fully loaded time of one second. Pingdom loads in a respectable 770 milliseconds. And then webpage test scores all A's bar one. And I believe the one is just because there's no CDN running. Now onto the VPS server. This server is from Fast Comet, as I mentioned, and is hosted through Linode. Now just a bit of a side note, if I took this exact server that I'm paying $90 a month for, and I set the exact same server up through Upcloud, it'll cost me $40 a month. That's $50 cheaper than what I'm paying through Fast Comet. But yeah, basically the extra $50 that you pay for the server goes to your support and the managing of the server which is really unnecessary but i'm digressing so the vps server has four cores eight gigs of ram 160 gigabyte of storage and is hosted in the usa let's check out the results so google page speed scores a desktop at 80 which isn't bad but the mobile comes in at 22 and well that sucks GT Metric scores the site an E with 55% and takes around 3.1 seconds, which isn't great either. 
Pingdom is a little bit better at around 1.27 seconds. And then web page test scores basically Fs. Again, not great. Now, while I realize that this isn't the world's most scientific test, the point of this video is to show you that you can in fact get really good hosting that outperforms some of the most expensive options out there for the price of two coffees, depending on where you live in the world. And the best thing of all is that you don't have to sign up really for cheap shared hosting. Now, before I end off, I want to share one final and quite frankly, very interesting test with you. So what I did was I ran a stress test on both of the sites through a website called Load Impact. And I mean, you can go and do it yourself. Uh, you don't have to pay. There's a couple of limits on there, but it gives you a great uh, tool to kind of see what the performance is of your host. So yeah, I did the test for shits and giggles, but what happened afterwards just blew my mind and caused me a shit ton of frustration as well. So as I mentioned, I ran a stress test on both of the sites and it sent quite a few thousand hits in a short amount of time. Now, if it wasn't obvious enough, I wanted to see how the two different options handle this stress. Now, during the tests, the $5 option slowed down just a little bit. The VPS, not so much. And I thought to myself that, oh crap, there goes my whole theory of cheap hosting, outperforming, expensive hosting. But then something interesting happened. About an hour or so after the tests finished, the VPS service started acting up. It started going down, coming back up, going down, a total of 35 different times, which resulted in a total downtime of just over 12 hours in around 24 hours, which is ridiculous. And this completely blew my mind because the $5 hosting option never skipped a beat. The point I'm trying to make here is just, is don't fall for all of the hype on the internet surrounding these massive hosting companies. Most of the reviews out there, be it on YouTube or blog articles, are biased, flawed, and the people only wanna make commissions out of you. To put things into perspective, if you sign up for one of the big hosts out there, I mean, pick one. If somebody signs up through your link, you can potentially make up to an over $200 for one sign up. So of course people are gonna just recommend random hosting companies without actually knowing what they recommend. It's just crazy. I mean, this dude is a prime example. And so with all that said, if you want me to make a video to show you exactly how you can set up hosting for $5 that will outperform the likes of Kinsta, more expensive options. Let me know in the comments below, like the video. I don't generally like asking for likes and all that stuff, but it'll help me to know whether you guys would want to see something like that because there's a lot of work that goes into making a video like that. And as always, subscribing helps me help you. And so help me help you. Stay awesome.